the goat, the goat of goats, Tom Brady, number 12, hanging it up. Uh, a man who is probably most known for saying he would beat me in a 40-yard dash. Yeah, I believe that's <laughs> like when you look at all the accomplishments of, you know, that's probably well, what he comes first. He ain't accomplished that yet. He, has, he that's still got to do it. He's still got to do, do that. It. Long list of everything to do. So, um, emotional goodbye. Lots to get to. Actually, kind of, it's the Thursday before Super Bowl week. And the three of us will all be in Arizona next week. So, we will be broadcasting yes, live sir. Monday through Friday live here on Peacock, obviously, at noon Eastern every single day from Radio Row, and uh, obviously available on demand wherever you get your podcast, the NFL and NBC YouTube channel uh, as well. Can't wait because there's always like a lot of great guests. We'll have to uh, talk to them. But before we get to all the news of the day, and there's been a lot of coaching changes as well, I think we got to start with TB12. Indeed. Sure. And firstly, Lawrence Jackson actually posted a retirement video on the same day as Tom Brady, but no one saw it. <laughs> no one saw it. <laughs> and so now he's just still here. Right? He's just come back in for yeah, you, you, yeah. The, the, la the last thing you want to do is retire the same day as Tom Brady. In fact, I think this will keep Aaron Rodgers wow. from retiring. Because I, I saw a tweet like, he ain't going to retire. Because then they'll go in the Hall of Fame the same, the same year. year. And then and he's he got to play. That. He doesn't want to play second fiddle no, to no, uh, no. Tom Brady. He do that. So Aaron Rodgers is absolutely playing another year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Like, even if he quits after one see, after yeah, one game. Yeah, right. You yeah. know? Um, we'll get to fantasy implications of Brady uh, retiring. But one of the biggest ones is that Aaron Rodgers is going to help a team. I think right. in the fact that he's sticking around. But yeah. in terms of best memories. And by the way, just not to derail uh, this, but I don't know if you saw this, but he might have been screwing around. But Devontae Adams last night was doing yeah. like a Q&A on Twitter with people and somebody tweeted at him yeah. uh, what neighborhood does uh, Na Aaron Rodgers move yeah. to and Devontae Adams quote tweeted and said mine. Like mine yeah. I think athletes are getting better at just kind of poking fun at the power yes. that they can wield like the Arian Foster thing with the NFL being rigged yeah. and right. all of that like yeah, that's a, that's a bit the, the Harry and Foster <laughs> accusing the NFL. People, people, right. people going is, for it though. Oh they like God. really going for that though. <laughs> I mean, we we live in an era where anything put on a social media, somebody believes it. You know, yeah. somebody's crazy uncle on Facebook, uh, it, you know, is now you know posting it and uh, sending it around to everyone. So, and by the way, just because Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams might be neighbors doesn't mean they play for the same team. But I thought that was interesting. But let's focus this on TB12. I 100% agree with you and Lawrence that obviously this means Rodgers is coming back. He is not going to want to go into the Hall of Fame yeah. the same year as Tom Brady. But let's take a moment here and just – we didn't really get a chance to, to – you know, this is our first show since uh, he announced his retirement. So I'll just kind of go around the horn and just, yeah. you know, give you know some thoughts – on Tom Brady Lawrence. I mean, look, man, whether you love him or you hate him, you will miss him in the game. Like he it, he was the NFL, you know. So um, you know, immediately when he uh made his little retirement video, I appreciated the fact that he was just like, Look, man, I'm gonna just get this out of the way. I did the long thing last right. year, you know, let me just get to it, let the Buccaneers get to figuring out what they have to do. And for me, I immediately thought of my best Tom Brady memory. Okay. Which for me, you know, a, a, a kid coming from Georgia is obviously Super Bowl 51. Yeah. <laughs> Super Bowl 51. I have come to appreciate that moment. Like, I don't lose sleep over that. It's over 28-3, like, you don't? Nah, nah, the nah. greatness of Brady? It, that's, you just got to chalk it up to that. Like, if, if the quarterback on the other side is Tom Brady, then 28-3, to three, like, you, you're not safe. Or if you Trevor Lawrence, you know, one of those right. two guys can come 47 back. 47 nothing. So, yeah, I just, right. you know, uh, I, I started just thinking about one of – if it's not my best time, my favorite Tom Brady moment, it's the most memorable one for me. Sure. <laughs> I, think, I was at that. I was actually at that Super Bowl. I mean, it was like, one of the things. It just – it felt like in that Super Bowl – it just felt like the first half, like everyone, and we were, my wife and I were there were two friends that are diehard Patriots fans. Yeah. And they were like, you know, like they'd seen a ghost the first half. They're just like, yeah. you know, pick but, six then, and but then but once it started happening, especially after the Edelman catch, it was just like, this has happened. Like it just, now it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Right. And they didn't lead till overtime. No one, you know, no one, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. Everyone, 28 3 is what everyone talks about, but no one remembers the fact that they literally did not lead in that game until they took the lead in overtime to, to win the game. I think to me, what I remember most about Brady is just that sense of inevitability when he was driving down to take the lead or to tie the game and just like the fatalism that the other yeah. team would feel that it just wasn't going to happen. Like, think about that game against Atlanta where people don't remember this, but like, I think Goskowski missed an extra point when it was 28 3 to go up 28 9. I, I remember. And so, 
he had to Brady had to convert two two point conversions, and when he's doing that at the end of yeah. the game, it's like this is a hundred percent chance that he's going to yes. convert this, and then there's a hundred percent chance that he's going to drive down the field in overtime. But I think his greatest masterpiece wasn't even that. I think it was the Seattle Super Bowl where he scores the two touchdowns, the two drives in the fourth quarter after the, uh, the Legion of Boom kind of rattles him early on and to bounce back and win that game. Everyone remembers Malcolm Butler, but Brady was majestic in that fourth quarter. He 100% was. I mean, like, you know, I, I've seen Brady win a number of his Super Bowls, not all of them, but a number of them. You know, I mean, I, I got to go to the Super Bowl for basically the last 10 to 12 years that I was at ESPN. So mm -hmm. obviously a lot of those covered Brady Super Bowls. So, but I think the thing that I, you know, the, I mean, there's so many things that sort of come to mind when you think about Brady, but whatever, I'm a fantasy guy, right? And so I think about, I think about 2007, right? I mean, like yes, that, sir. the, the, yeah. the yeah. 50 <laughs> touchdown year, like I had him on a team, <laughs> you know, and it was just one of those things where you talk about the inevitability, like it didn't matter who else you started. <laughs> like I got Tom. You know, and he was just, he just went absolutely crazy that 2007 year. By the way, 2021, also one of the, uh, one of the great fantasy seasons, one of the top 17 best single season fantasy point totals by a quarterback in NFL history. You see it there. Here's just some of the, some of the games. You remember, you think about, you know, that, that crazy game against the Titans in 2009. Obviously the Dolphins game in 07 was the, um, uh, was was during that crazy run and look at all the like look at them bucks games, look at them right? Bucks games. Oh, so it's what the Vegas recent. become now. <laughs> you know my my uh, my friend and former colleague Field Yates had a great tweet about Brady just saying like broke down his stats by decade and just like yeah, his yeah. stats as a 20 year old Hall of Fame worthy his yeah, stats yeah, as a yeah. 30 year old Hall of Fame worthy his stats as a 40 year old Hall of Fame Hall of Fame worthy like if you'd only play if you only could have took his stats from 40 to 45. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. he, he, um, there's just multiple Super Bowls in each decade, too. Seven Super Bowl wins, five Super Bowl MVPs. He's the number, he's the NFL leading scorer in, uh, the NFL leader, I should say, in passing touchdowns, passing yards, uh, completions, attempts, game winning drives, fourth quarter comebacks, quarterback starts, quarterback wins, touchdown yards and wins in the playoffs, and of course, no player in NFL history has scored more fantasy points than Thomas Brady, number 12. Goat of goats. Yes. Also the, the betting goat as well. No one uh, has covered the spread more than Tom Brady, covered in 58% of his games. So if you just bet on Tom Brady every single game, you would have won money, which is no surprise. And there is, there's no more terrifying feeling the past two decades in the NFL than betting against Tom Brady in a big game. And I'll never forget... Uh, the second Giants Super Bowl where I was on the Giants money line and there was just this sense that this guy just won't die. He right. just will not die and when they're going down the field uh, at the end and Gronk just barely doesn't get the, the Hail Mary in the end zone, Brady on that drive he had like a fourth and 20 that he converted. And it's right. just like, this guy just won't go down. It's no. just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think that'll be his legacy. The, this feeling that there was just, yeah, there was some higher power that was just propelling him. The, the inevitability is, is just a great uh, phrase. I agree. They just, like, it's, you know, the, the, all the cliches, do they leave too much time for Tom Brady? Always and the do. answer is yes. It do. doesn't matter how much time <laughs> they left for Tom Brady. If they left any amount of time for Tom Brady, it was too much. Yeah. Um, and you just you just knew it was over. Even this past year, even this past year, the 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 primetime game against the Saints, right? The the yeah. uh, you know, yeah. like yeah. right, yeah. like you were like that was a game where neither offense was running. Like the you know, Tom was the offensive line was so beat up. Tom's just getting hit left and right. He's got no receivers out there that are helping him out at all. And yet still, at the end of it, whatever it was, like sixteen nine or whatever, you knew like. This is, I, I forget what the exact score was, but like they get, he had like two and a half minutes left in a game in which they hadn't moved the ball at all the entire game, and you're like, well, yep. oh boy, two and a half right. minutes. That's like a quarter for time. I know. Like you it's, got time. And now I'm even thinking about Jacksonville a couple of years back, the AFC Championship. Like, they had them dead to rights, too, with Blake Bortles. But, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they should have lost that game. That was a weird fumble. But it's fumble like, that it's wasn't so a fumble, many yeah. games he should have lost, but it's like he did it. And it's the, it, 
he's had a lot of good teams and good defenses, obviously Bill Belichick, but it's never a coincidence when a guy go to 10 Super Bowls and you the quarterback on all of those well, teams. And by the way, I think that's a great point here. And I think that the, the fascinating thing is that for so long, the critics of Brady and, uh, the, you know, the, the more he played, yeah, yeah. you know, they got less and less and less. But the critics of Brady would say system quarterback benefited from Belichick benefited from yeah. the great from the greatest coach you know whatever deflate gate and blah 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 mm -hmm. blah 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 like those are the things they'll say so okay fine like but then he goes to tampa bay as a 40 year old like at, year. at 43 years old and t takes a seven to nine team the year before to the super bowl and wins the following year like to me like any question you had and I didn't have any questions, but there are there are naysayers out there. I There's used to some ask haters. some questions like 2010, 11, but that was who a lot of people did. Right. But it's like, you like I said, around. yeah, it, it's like it ain't no coincidence. You just winning seven Super Bowls, like that's nuts. Yeah, I think with Brady, I mean, the thing that I'll remember about him from a player perspective as well, one, just always standing so tall in the pocket, just being so courageous as well, just taking hits. You know, the, the broadcasters always talk about how you have to stand tall in the pocket, have to wear the hit because it'll allow the receiver to get open. I'll never forget AFC title game in Denver against the Broncos, the year the Broncos won the Super Bowl, where Brady is just under absolute siege from what DeMarcus Ware and Von Miller, yeah, and he's yeah. just getting sacked and sacked and sacked. And he's just taking the hits, and then he can Converts the fourth and ten to Gronk down the field, and they lose by two in the end. But he just he just wouldn't never die. And uh, no, the and, and by the way, I mean we talked about this this year. Like, like his longevity. Is, you know, we, we make fun of like the kale salads and you know whatever the the the, the avocado broccoli, ice cream, the avocado <laughs> ice cream and the broccoli milkshakes and everything like that. But the fact <laughs> of the matter is, no, look this year. What was the number? Sixty-seven different quarterbacks started a game in the NFL. This year, 67 different quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, we just saw it with San Francisco. San yeah, Francisco yeah, was down to their yeah. fourth string. They had to play their emergency quarterback, like yeah. their fifth string quarterback in, a, in an NFC title game. And yet, at age 45, Tom Brady played every game. One major injury. In One his major career. injury in a, you know, in a career that, you know, spanned multiple decades. Um, you know, that was that's wild. Three, right? He, even with the new protection of the quarterbacks, it. That's like, man, that, that man is just blessed. <laughs> Lawrence, 67 <laughs> quarterbacks started a game this year, and it wasn't all because of ineffective play. Correct. You know what I mean? Like, again, I mean, you know, just I mean, whatever. Just think about, the, think about the last two games we saw. Okay, Joe Burrow played every game, but we saw some Chad Henney this year, yep. you know, yeah. against the Jaguars. Yep. The, you know, obviously Gardner Minshew started a couple games for the Eagles. Yep. And then – you know, the, the Niners, of course, from Trey Lance to Garoppolo to Brock Purdy to Josh Johnson to Chris McCaffrey running the Wildcat. I mean, that so, counts. Right. <laughs> I just anyway. So his just longevity is incredible. I I will tell you guys that. So you guys know that I, I have a I, I uh, you know, full disclosure, like I do. A, I have a deal with Autograph, which is Tom Brady's NFT company. And so I'm part of Tom's NFT. And so the reason I bring this up is that there's an end of the year party um and i don't know if i'm allowed to say this on air whatever but i this I, uh anyway i'm going to have an opportunity at some point in the future i'll just say this here's what i'll say that thanks to autograph i will have the opportunity at some point in the in the near future uh to interview tom brady right. i'm gonna have that in, i'm gonna have the opportunity to do that and i i don't know how much time i'm gonna get but i'm just like what do I ask the guy? And by what do I ask the guy? I mean, like, I need like four hours. You know what I mean? Yeah, There's so yeah. many things. Like, and I'm just like, I've just been thinking about, I want to ask that. Well, well that, that might take, you know, like. You got to make it count. I got to make it count because I don't know how much time I'm getting with him. But, um, I mean, I, I can't tell you how excited I am about this. Uh, so, anyway, the, the fact of the matter is, is that, um, you know, he is truly the go to the goats. I thought the J.J. Watt tweet was accurate. Like, you know, no debate. No discourse like he is. No discussion. Yeah, it wasn't a debate a couple of years, a few, several years back, you know. But now that he's, you know, retired, I feel, I mean, maybe he just felt like to put that stamp on it and be like, hey, look, this is what it is. So, but, yeah, it, it's been years since. It just know. doesn't feel like, you know, you, you have, you know, Michael versus LeBron and, and um, in the NBA. And there's, you know, there's other sports where you can do that for where you could say, was it this, you know, I, you know, um, 
does it feel like I mean I know you could talk Manning you can talk Rodgers I mean if you're like, talking quarterbacks and the greatest and most accomplished no I don't think you could I think you can argue that like Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes, they might be better quarterbacks than Tom Brady in terms of the ceiling of their talent. But Definitely. in terms of career, no, there's no, no one holds a candle yeah, nah. to no, Brady. Just, uh, the, the amount of clutch throws yep. Tom Brady has made, you know, the accuracy, just anyway, yep. it's unbelievable. Let's, uh, well, let's talk about on. some of the fantasy implications yes, uh, in terms of players who are dependent on a quarterback like Tom Brady. I mean... Tampa Bay, uh, their pass catcher production this season. I mean, you see the big names at the top of your screen, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Evans, who kind of salvaged this season late, particularly with that monster game against Carolina, but wasn't really himself. Godwin was rock solid despite missing time uh, coming off the ACL at the start of the season. But I mean, it's still, it's an impressive lineup, but uh, it's not quite as impressive if uh, if Tom Brady's not throwing another ball. To To me, Evans and Godwin will be fine. They were fantasy superstars with Jameis Winston, uh, yeah. even with, you know, even Fitz Magic. Like, I mean, Mike Evans has had a thousand receiving yards in every single season he's played in the NFL. Right. Which is nine. Okay. I mean, Godwin, Godwin is somebody who emerged prior to Tom Brady right. coming there. So obviously it depends on who they get. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind a reunion with Jameis Winston. We'll see, you know, right now Kyle yeah. Trask is the only quarterback currently on the roster Ooh, for the deal. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So we'll see if they decide to do like kind of a full rebuild. And if it was Trask, then you might feel a little bit worse about it. But to me, the one that got the uh, – so I feel like ultimately Evans and Godwin will be fine. I don't think Gage or Julio or any of the complimentary other wide receivers there are anything interesting. To me, the person who loses the most fantasy value without Tom Brady there is Leonard Fournette. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, the, the fact is, is that Leonard Fournette was somebody who the Jacksonville Jaguars – declined to pick up his fifth year option and ultimately waived him you know they were like and his i think if brady doesn't resuscitate his career very different outcome for leonard fournette in terms of how long he's in the nfl or what his career is but uh brady trusted him in pass pro brady loves to dump off to the running back what made fournette's fantasy career last year especially and somewhat this year but definitely like last yeah, he, year yeah. was all the receptions yeah. because brady just trusted him in, in the backfield and sort of kept dumping off to him and and so we don't know whoever whatever quarterback is back there isn't going to want uh fournette back there as much as brady did and we already saw rashad white eat into his workload towards the end of and he'll last be season. rashad white will be there he'll yes, be there correct. um he's on a rookie deal yep. to say about leonard fournette too he wasn't known as being a pass catcher out the backfield in jacksonville like he got with tom brady and he unlocked a whole new you know piece of his skill set and we've seen this with tom brady from the beginning of him playing with the patriots james white uh kevin falk Whoever he had at the running back, yeah. there was all Danny Woodhead. He's always had that guy to come in and, you know, we could start him in the flex. Like, there's weeks where we started Woodhead, yeah, right. definitely James the, White. Who is you know Tom Brady's saying? PPR running back this week? I need right. nine points. Right. And, and, boom, and you, you know it. whoever it right. is, like, you're going to get that nine points right, right there. So the, that, that'll that be the biggest you know, change, uh, like you said. Yeah, I mean, Leonard Fournette looked like he was on the trajectory of, like, late career Le'Veon Bell, uh, late career Todd Gurley, those type of guys. Then all of a sudden he goes from, he turns into playoff Lenny after being 3.6 yeah. yards per carry Lenny. And, uh, yeah, I think he's definitely going to be the one who suffers the most. Let's talk about the NFC South, which is a uh, complete disaster. Really. Loaded with quarterbacks. Yeah, we look at the depth charts. At the quarterback position in the Ooh. NFC South, Desmond Ritter and Marcus Mariota in Atlanta. Uh, the aforementioned great Kyle Trask in Tampa Bay. Frank Reich is inheriting uh, Matt Corral and Jacob Eason. And then the New Orleans Saints, Jameis Winston and uh, Jake Luton. <coughs> uh, so, yeah, just a, a murderer's row of great quarterbacks in the division. In terms of who's even the favorite in this division, I would say New Orleans, just because Jameis Winston is the best quarterback currently on yeah. the roster, and I think they've also got the best defense. Yeah, right. And with that offense, I mean, I, I don't think you can I, count on Michael Thomas, and we're going to have lots of discussions in the preseason yeah, next but, year about Michael Thomas, but Chris Olave um, still there. gives them an elite option. Yeah, and we saw some, you know, and Alvin Kamara, like he's got a legal situation that he has to deal with, and we'll see how that right. plays out. But we saw some nice moments from uh, Juwan Johnson and Rashid Shaheed, and like they, they had a couple pieces. I agree with you. They, they have the best defense there. 
I mean, I'll say this. Carolina played tough under Steve Wilkes down the stretch, and we'll see. be interesting to see what that Carolina uh, defense looks like this upcoming year and what Frank Reich does. Uh, you know, if I'm Frank Reich, I'm going to try to keep Steve Wilkes. You know, see if yeah. you can talk him into that's uh, talk him tough. into. <laughs> that's gonna be tough. I know like he, what's going on there. He said something on social media too, like I'm disappointed, but I ain't gonna quit. You know how it yeah. goes. You know that'll be like he like Atlanta trying to get him right. Yeah. And so you know how players do it, coaches do it too, out of spite, just go right there in the division. Although Steve yeah. Brooks better know who he got on that defense in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it's look at the end of the day, like. You know the the Carolina Panthers owner want David Tepper wants to win. Like you know, there's there's ways to solve you know uh, pride issues. That, but, oh, that's a fact, and it's it, and it's something that's green. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if he pays up or whatever. But you know, so we'll see how all that happens. I don't think it'll be tough for the Saints to get Andy Dalton back if that's the way they want to go. Oh, I think Lord. there's going to be a lot of quarterback <laughs> shuffling. It's going to be a fascinating offseason. Talk about all the uh, all the quarterbacks here. But I would agree with you that if I had to place a bet today, the Saints would be the where I would bet. But you know what I'm going to do? You know, Not wait. place a bet yeah, today. Yeah. Wait yeah. it out. Yeah, wait yeah, wait it out. I don't think you'll time. get good enough. I don't think you I mean, you tell me, but I don't feel like you get good enough future odds right now that it would be worth it because there, there's, there's too much uncertainty. Too much. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, Thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.